So once you have the right materials to get painting, you need a subject to paint. My style of painting is not quick, so I've found that by far the most practical way to work is to paint from photographs I've taken myself. There's often a bit of criticism made about working from photos, but I think that's to do with the historically poor quality of amateur photographs. These days though, even the most basic digital camera is capable of taking fantastic shots and with the benefit that you can check the images you're getting as you're taking them. Even basic models have a macro function, usually depicted with a flower symbol, for taking extreme close-ups, which is perfect for capturing all of the detail we need to paint from. And there is also no real need to print the photographs out to work from them. As you saw in the other materials video, I suggest you use a tablet like an iPad or even a laptop or desktop computer to view your photographs on. Although different screens vary a bit in quality, with Apple ones seeming to have the most accurate colours, you still get a better result than if you were to print out your photos on a home printer. If you do need or prefer to print your photos out, that's fine, but you may want to play around with your printer's settings to try and get the best result you can. So, my creative process starts with a photographing session. This might be out and about in someone's garden, or I might spot something interesting at the supermarket and bring it home to photograph. Either way, the main tip I have is to use a white sheet of card to position behind your subject so that you can isolate it and can get a much better feel for how your composition will look. For example, look at the difference it makes with these strawberries. And with this apple blossom. With the white card, you can see straight away what your painting could look like. Photographs also have the advantage that they allow you to capture an image of your subject in situ and photographs also allow you to capture how light was falling on a subject in a moment in time which makes it much easier to reproduce that light accurately than it would be if you were painting from life when your lighting would keep changing. With the emphasis I place on light and dark in my painting this is so important for getting great results. When photographing you ideally want a day when the lighting is good, really bright but not so sunny as to cast really strong shadows. Once I spot a subject I like, I start taking some photos to set up my composition. If I'm out and about, I'll often crouch down to get a sense of being up close and personal with my subject. It's really useful that the camera's viewfinder is the same aspect ratio or proportions as the paper I paint on, so what I see in the viewfinder really does mirror what I'll paint. Sometimes I might bring a subject home to photograph there, where I will usually photograph it outside where the lighting is good. Once a composition clicks, I take a series of macro shots of each different part of the subject so that I can be sure to have in-focus photos of every element. That's usually it, unless the colours cause me concern. Cameras sometimes struggle to reproduce very bright reds and purples, so if I'm photographing something that colour, I'll make sure I mix up some paint to the right colour whilst I have the subject there in front of me, creating some colour swatches in a sketchbook and I make a few notes in order to remind me what hues it was I used to mix the colours. In terms of the tutorials I offer, I will always supply you with a photograph for you to work from, which you can either view on a screen or print off. But I hope this video has inspired you to get photographing for your own personal painting projects.